Hey guys, and welcome to a new video in this computer vision tutorial. In this video here, we're going to do detection of RUCO markers. So we're going to open up a live camera and then we're actually like going to detect a RUCO markers that we have on my calibration board. Then we're going to see the results. We're going to do detection. And, and then in the next video, we're going to build on top of that and do post estimation of all these RUCOs that we're actually detecting. So we can draw a, like a coordinate system on top of our RUCOs. And then we can actually like detect how are they like uh, translated and, and rotated around in the room. And then we can use that for a lot of different kind of applications where we want to do post estimation of an object where we have placed these Arugos markers on. But first of all, remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification under the video. Only 10% of you guys watching these videos here act like subscribe to the channel. It's just a single click and it helps me and the YouTube channel out in a massive way. You can also sign up and enroll in my OpenSVG GPU course if you want to speed up your computer vision applications and projects. If you're only using the CPU. We can only run our, our algorithms with a couple of frames per second. But when we're utilizing the TPU for computer vision and OpenCV, we can actually like make real time applications in the real life. So we're going to jump straight into the Visual Studio code here. I'm going to go over the code of how we can actually like do this a real code detection. And then at the end of the program, we're actually like going to run it with a live web camera. And then we can actually like detect uh, the Ruko markers that I have on my uh, camera calibration chessboard. So first of all, we need to import our modules. We're going to import NumPy, Time, and also OpenCV. Then we have this Aruko dictionary here, which I explained in the other video where we actually like generated these uh, Aruko markers. So definitely go check that out if you want to know more details of what is going on. But basically, we can just choose like the Aruko type that we want to have and that we want to detect in our image. So now we're going to go down and actually like see the function that displays the Arucos that we're actually like detecting. So first of all, here we need to um, we need to display our Aruco. So we need to pass in the corners um, corners of each of the Arucos that we're detecting. We also have the IDs which I mentioned in the other video. So for each of the Aruco markers that we're detecting, we're actually like assigning an ID to them. So this is kind of like tracking off like which uh, Aruco or like where is the Aruco acts like in the image. So first of all, we'll do detection and then we'll assign an ID to that Aruco as well. And then we can act like know which Aruco um, are in the image frame and also where is it in the image frame. Then we also have an, uh, a parameter here for if um, the, the corners or like the Arucos are rejected. And then we need to pass in the image that we want to display uh, the Aruco detections on. So first of all here, we check if the length of our corners is greater than zero, which means that we have to like have some detections. Then we're going to flatten the IDs because we like to just have like a, a vector or like matrix here with our IDs. We're going to flatten that first of all. So we can actually like work with that corresponding to our uh, corners. So then we're going to go down, go down here and actually like just have a full loop running through all the Aruco detections that we have. So we're going to zip the corners. So we'll have the corners here, uh, which will be all the corners of our of our X like uh, bounding box of our detected Aruco. And then we also have our IDs, which is the corresponding IDs assigned to each of the corners. Uh, and then we're just going to zip that. So we get our marker corner and we also get our marker ID. So first of all here, we need to set up our corners. We're going to reshape it to four uh, to a four by two. So we actually like just have all our coordinates for our top right corner, our uh, top left corner, or like a top left corner, top right corner, and then bottom right, and then a bottom left corner. So basically here, we're just going to set our corners equal to this tuple. So we have top left, top right, bottom right, and bottom left. And then we basically just convert those to integers down here. So we need to have the, those casted into integers so we can display them on the image. Then we're basically just going to draw lines here of our Ruka markers. So we're just going to draw lines between all the corners that we have detected. So we basically just get a bounding box around the detected Ruka marker. Then we also need to find the center of our Ruka marker. So that will be our center's X coordinate here and the Y coordinate. And then we basically just take the top left corner and the bottom right corner. We take the X values of that and then we just divide it by two. So we take the middle of that. And then we do the exact same thing for our y coordinates. We take the uh, we divide it by two, so we get the middle of our uh, of our y values. So we have our x value and y value, and when we have when we take the half of that, then we'll basically just get the center of our bounding box. Then we're going to put out the text with our marker ID, so we both have the detection. We draw a bounding box around our rook marker, and we also put and we also put in the marker um, at our detected aruko. Then we're just going to return our image after we have actually like displayed our detection on the image that we passed into the function here as well. So now we can go down and actually like see the, the main the main loop here or like the main code where we actually like have our type. We need to specify our type. 
uh, we need to get our dictionary of our Ruko markers, and then we also need to generate our uh, detectors for our Ruko. We need to set up our video capture with a webcam, and then we just go down, pass in our image through the detector, and then we'll get the results out. And then we're actually like just going to see the results later on. But first of all, here we're going to specify the Ruko type. So in this video here, we're basically just going to use this board here. I have this board here with all these different kind of like Ruko markers. I can see this is a uh, uh, dictionary so we're using the uh, aruko dict four by four so need to specify that first of all so these will be four by four aruko markers and then here we basically just have the tag size or the size of our arucos so we can basically just go with 100 here then we're going to get our aruko dictionary we just call in this we just use our dictionary to actually get the values from opencv for the aruko types that we specified up here and then we basically need to create our Aruko parameter detector. So we have cv2.aruko.detectParameters underscore create. So we're just creating this detector for our Aruko markers. We're going to open up our video capture here. We're going to set our capture here. So we're going to take the frame width and the frame height. We're going to set that equal to HD. So 1280 by 720. Then we're going to have a while loop here just running as long as our webcam is open. We're going to read in a frame from our webcam. We'll store it in the in variable. We're going to take the shape of that first of all, so we can store the height and the width. And then here we're basically just going to resize our image a bit before we actually like pass it into our detect markers function. So here we basically just have 1000 by around something like uh, 500. And then we're just going to resize our image to that with OpenCV. Then we can go in and actually like do the marker detection with the Aruko module. So we have cv2.aruko.detectMarkers. Then we need to pass in our image. We also need to pass in our Aruko dictionary. So the type of the Aruko that we want to detect. And we also need to set our parameters equal to our Aruko parameters that we created up here at the top. So this is basically just like an instance of a class that we're creating. And then we pass that into our detect markers method as well. And then the output from this detect markers will be the rejected Arucos. It will be the IDs. So if you get if you don't get like any detections, you can actually like go in and check like the rejected one, try to like debug it in that way. But either way, we will get like the corners and the IDs of the detected markers in our image of our detected Arucos. And then we can use our function that I just went over to act like display and act like draw the bounding box and also put in the ID of the Aruco that we have detected. So here we're going to have our detected markers, which will be the image. We're going to set that equal to our Aruco display. And then we pass in the corners, the IDs, the rejected ones, and also the image that we want to act like uh, display our detections on. Then we can just have an info here showing what uh, markers that we have detected. We will have a while loop here or like an if statement here checking if we hit Q. If we hit Q, we will terminate the program. We will go out of while loop. We will destroy all the windows and we will also release our webcam. So now we're actually able to run this program here and see the results and see if we can actually detect these uh, Aruko markers on my calibration chess boards. So now we're going to do the detections where I'm going to like take up this calibration board and then we can see the results. So here we have the, the live webcam running here. We can see that it acts like detects all the different kind of like Arucos in the image and even assigns these um, IDs correctly. So we have zero, one, two, three, four at the top and it goes all the way down to uh, 34. So that's like really cool. It's really stable with uh, with the detections. We can see even if I rotate the board here around, it still keeps track of all these different kind of like Arucos detected. If you move it too far, it's not really able to see it because of the blurriness. But here we can see like when we have a still and really good focus with the camera, it is actually like detecting these Arucos very, very good. And these are really small Arucos. We can try on some bigger ones uh, with my cal bigger calibration board. So, so I'll just take this one up here. This is a, this is a way, way larger calibration board. We can see here even at the distance, we can get some calcul like some detections. If I put it up here in front of me, we are not really able to detect the markers. And there's a really good uh, explanation to that because this is not the same Aruko markers that um, I used on the small calibration board. If you just turn into the program here and go in and change that. So here we need to go up and specify the new type. So this is now five by five. So these are some other markers that we need to detect. So you need to be able, like you need to know what the type of markers are you actually detecting. And then you just need to set that type up here. And then you can basically just do detections and post estimation and so on, which we're going to cover in the next video. But here we're just opening up again. Let's see if we can do detections on the small board. So right now we're not doing any detections because this is not the correct type. We will take up this large 
calibration board here again and see if we can actually like, do some detections. And now we can see that we actually like, get some pretty nice detections in the upper part. So maybe like these lower parts here is not the five by five detections, but here we can see that the upper part is just able to like detect all the root crows that is actually like, visible by the camera. Uh, it, it tracks pretty good. It assigns the correct ID to all of the detected root crows here. So again, you can generate your own root crows, test them out with the program. You can just copy paste it. All the code will be um, down um, in my GitHub. It will be down in the description. And then you can basically just do the detection. You can do post estimations, which we're going to cover in the next video. Then we're going to see the results. We can actually like both rotate, rotate these boards here around. We can keep track of these Arucos and we can get a really nice post estimation. So again, if you have an object that you want to do a post estimation on, you can just like put these Aruco markers on top of that object. Then you can create some really nice computer vision and augmented reality applications. So thank you guys for watching this video here. And again, remember to hit the subscribe button and pull notification on the video. Also like this video here if you like the content and more, more in the future. Again, I'm doing this computer vision tutorial where we go over like everything within computer vision in OpenCV and so on. We go over the theory, camera calibration, stereo vision, and so on. So if you're interested in that tutorial, I'll link to it over here or else on the next video guys. Bye for now.